For the few that have actually read any terms and conditions, what sneaky things have you found? I was stoned and downloaded a mobile game some years ago and decided to read the terms and conditions. It was like 20 pages and mostly had to do with privacy and microtransaction stuff. In the back half a paragraph was the lyrics to Toto's Africa. I know at some point Comcast was not responsible if it killed you. Haven't looked at it in years though, used to work for them so you get to learn the terms pretty quickly. I had a Victoria's Secret coupon that said Canadians are required to pass a math question or test in order to be eligible for the discount. I think I still have it at my desk, my job in part is writing terms and conditions, agreements, and disclosures for the bank I work at so I actually do read a lot of T and CS in homage to the amount of time my colleagues in the field put into writing 18 pages of garbage no one but examiners read. The Canadian math requirement is the strangest I've ever seen. In the hiring contract for the last company I worked for, there was a line buried on page like 22 that said if you email a certain email address on your first day saying you saw the line, you'd get a bonus day of PTO for the year. GameStation once made an immortal soul clause on April Fool's Day to prove that no one actually reads the terms and conditions. It read, by placing an order via this website on the first day of the fourth month of the year 2010 Anno Domini, you agree to grant us a non-transferable option to claim, for now and forevermore, your immortal soul. Quote. At a gun range one time I saw that if I yelled out, I love dogs, my time and anything I buy is half price. I immediately did so, startling my best friend. That was awesome. The contract to a job I had working in the desert warned about the frequency of alien attacks. I was disappointed to go a year and a half without any, though. DeviantArt's TOS is basically a contract allowing them to print, reproduce, and profit from your art, if they so choose, without needing your permission or consent. Usually this takes the form of ads or contests, where they'll be used in public displays. If you post works that show a high level of technical skill, then you need to either sign it or use a big ol' watermark. If you make money on TikTok, the owners can rightfully take the money. Thank you customer for actually reading our terms and conditions. Send us an email with the following content and we will send you a free box of chocolates. They did indeed send chocolate. After reading through all the comments here, I see no one has mentioned how useful this tip can be if you're downloading some shady software, scroll through the entire TOS and find any check boxes, then uncheck them. Usually for things like this, that's how various programs and malware will end up being downloaded without you understanding how, which is what will usually happen with people who are especially young or especially old. There will be something written in there like, you agree that you would like to install Megasupersaver Search Plus to your PC and set it as your default search engine, with a pre-checked box next to it, leading to a lot of easily avoided problems. So yeah, scroll through and uncheck boxes when you're downloading something weird. You don't even need to read the terms, just be aware what could be tucked away inside them. I don't have a story myself, but I found this article about a man who won a $1,000 giveaway that was hidden in the EULA of an app. The 3,000 people who installed the program before him didn't bother to read it. Back in the day when people legally acquired new music by buying CDs, one of the bands I listened to would hide nice little messages to fans in the copyright legal fine print in the booklet that came with the CD. Sometimes there would be a small link to a hidden part of their website that had extra content. A while ago, tilde 2011, there was a scam work from home service widely advertised all over Facebook and other places, promising enormous paychecks and a free trial. It was an opt-out subscription service as you might expect. Curious as to how the scam worked, I looked at their T and CS. There was a clause in there requiring you to pay $10,000 in compensation to the company if you filed a chargeback against their fees. Whilst that would never stand up in court, dealing with debt collectors who might conveniently offer to settle for a mere 3000 would be all sorts of hell. On Amazon, anytime they want they can take away from me the books that's I've bought on Kindle store. As someone who had to get a privacy policy and read the thing, as far as I know I'm not allowed to use my own service. According to the legal agreement I got with myself and agreed to, in case I do know that I access the service against what's written in the privacy policy I should contact myself by email letting me know that so I can erase any private data I got on myself. If I refuse to erase the data I think I can sue myself. Send help. 
that I'm a lawyer. Whenever undergrads tell me they want to go to law school, I tell them to read the entire iTunes terms and conditions, without skipping a single sentence. If they can't get through it, they don't have the discipline and attention to detail for law school. Sony can sue you for literally not updating your console software if you're connected to internet. There was a story contest from a theme park where your story could be published. But any story submitted would automatically be owned by the company and could not be used by you or others. So they could, 1. Throw your story in the trash and you still wouldn't legally own it anymore and can't publish it somewhere else too. They own your story so they can make money out of it without paying you a dime 3. They were not obligated to credit you as the writer other than mentioning it somewhere in the first publishing, after that it was fair game 4. They were allowed to alter your story as they saw fit without consulting you he wasn't the only one who noticed, it was soon pointed out on social media. There wasn't really a backlash, but I didn't submit a story. IDK if this is super surprising, but I read the entire lease for my first apartment and apparently, I couldn't get out of my lease even if I died. Wanted to sign my kid up for cheerleading. Sat there and read the terms and agreement. Said something along the lines of, we are not responsible for any accidents that occur in the transportation of your child. My husband lost his brother in a school transportation accident and they initially tried to avoid the blame. So naturally that line gave us the heebie-jeebies and we just left. Turns out they were just a shady company all around. She now does cheer through her school. Amazon's Oz service terms contain a clause pertaining to a zombie apocalypse. No, really, greater than however, this restriction will not apply in the event of the occurrence certified by the United States Centers for Disease Control or successor body of a widespread viral infection transmitted via bites or contact with bodily fluids that causes human corpses to reanimate and seek to consume living human flesh, blood, brain or nerve tissue and is likely to result in the fall of organized civilization. It wasn't actually me, it was the manager I was interning with. He told me about how it was important to read everything, even the terms and conditions. When you go to an iPhone's license page, or something else, I don't remember, it says that they won't take any responsibility to any shock you received from the phone if it were 5mm away from you, unless you had something blocking it from your skin, like clothes, or a pocket protector. Pretty sure anyone who ever played the original Diablo also agreed sold their soul to the devil in the terms and conditions. The dev team of the video game Factorio is explicit not responsible if you stay awake all night long playing Factorio and can't go to school, work in the morning. Opening square bracket. WhatsApp, when it went full Facebook four years after purchase, sent out an Android update. The update said it was just adding the ability to give group chats a subheading. What it was actually doing was giving Facebook permission to take information. This option was enabled by default, of course it was, and you had only three months to notice this had happened before the option to opt out was disabled. I was late noticing this, but when I read the terms and conditions, the last line said something along the lines of, even if you opt out, Facebook and the Facebook family of companies will still take the data for. Training purposes. On deleted my account. They probably had my info by that point but fluff that garbage. Installed signal. Something that I wish I read was on Fabletics online store. Apparently if you make any purchase they automatically sign you up to their VIP program which is a $50 per month subscription for VIP clothes. I made one purchase on their site, checked out like any other online store, and got my clothes a week later. Eight months go by and I notice a $50 taken out of my bank from Fabletics, I check my bank pretty often so I DK how I missed this, and it turned out to be a recurring payment for eight months. I called their support line and explained to the guy that I never signed up for their subscription and I never even received any sign up confirmation emails or payment statements to know what was happening. He said I most likely signed up when I purchased my clothes 8 months ago because it's in their terms. It's like once you sign up they ghost you and take your money every month. It took a lot of frustration and refusal to hang up the phone until they finally said I can get a refund of my $400 plus that was just sitting in my VIP account. I was like clearly I was unaware of this because from the past 8 months I haven't made any more purchases on your stupid site, give me my money back. They finally refunded it all back. Fluffing scammers. Don't buy garbage from Fabletics.
I still should leave an online review about it because after looking up Fabletics scam, it seems to happen to a lot of people. A job schedule app my company uses requires you to log in using the company email. To set this up on your phone, you have to give your company the rights to erase the contents of your phone remotely, probably in case you become a threat to the company. No thanks.